So now we're back for realsies. Okay, we're back for reals. And, uh... We got things to do. So number one, we did get a message here. So we're gonna check that out. But let's make that beacon. And then we will... Hop into the Seamoth, and we're gonna go check out those other, um, life pods. Okay. High priority automated message from Aurora Live Pod. What? Coordinates attack. Live Pod is carrying high priority passenger. Yoki Kassar. I said Kassar. Why do I have to record this anyway? Send immediate burial detail. Burial Signal detail. Location uploaded to PDA. This is like my favorite thing is when we find a new, uh, a new beacon. That's the best. I'll put all the current beacons in red. All the other ones, uh, in yellow. And... This one, I think we finished as well, because we hit it. I think. So... Let's turn this on. Oh, now this... I guess we're done with, right? So we could turn that off. And we can keep our other beacon on. So really we have the other uh, Degazi habitat. We have life pod 13. And I think everyone else we've found so far. Except for these ones in the clues. Again, let's quickly review. Uh, data downloads, codes and clues. So life pod 4 is 150 meters northwest of the port midsection. Life pod 6 is 400 meters northwest west northwest of that okay so uh yeah we will go back to the island at some point because there's some stuff there that we didn't check out i'm sure but uh for now let's get going welcome aboard captain <sighs> this is so sick Now, I wonder how the radiation... It must still impact us in here. <laughs> hey, Solixisms, what's up, man? Thank you so much for the sub. That's really nice, dude. Thank you. So once we reach the port midsection, we're gonna go north west and it's only about 150 meters this thing's awesome power wise it doesn't seem to use like we're not flying through power either which is pretty cool and we haven't gotten anything about radiation so maybe this thing fully protects us that could be a thing Okay, so here's the port midsection. If we want to go northwest... Hey, Ogle! Thank you, Ogle. Oh, my buddy the Reefback is here. I love it. Now, we, I, I don't suppose we can, like, d mine or do anything while we're in here, right? Looks like there might be some attachments that we add later. So this thing is supposed to be on the surface, but I'm pretty sure that we've gone... More than... What was it? 150 meters northwest? Like, it looks like it's actually in view of the Aurora, but hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. If you look at the picture, like, the angle, it's way more... Like, this way, it seems. Let's go looking. Do you guys think we're on the right track here? Like, without, like, 
telling me where to go. This is the idea of how to find this... this... life pod, I think. Maybe I wasn't close enough to the midsection. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Maybe... No, yeah, okay. Let's get closer. Couldn't be on the other side of its northwest. No, exactly. Oh, here! It's right here! Guys, we found it! Now, this thing... Uh, I'm probably gonna lose that at some point, aren't I? Oh, this is the coolest. Finding these things is the best. Creature decoy. Creature decoy. Okay, let's check that. This advanced deployable is a catch-all solution for mimicking the behavior of a living creature for purposes of scientific research or predator evasion. Vibrates, cycles air and water, and sends out randomized high-frequency sound waves to emulate a living organism. Maybe hand-placed or launched from compatible Cyclops submarines. Short onboard battery provides limited lifespan, attracts predators of all kinds. So this is like, if something really bad happens, then we want to use that. Now did we, we just got the, we just got the blueprint for it, right? That's it. Let's see where it is. Creature decoy. Titanium and a wiring kit. Not bad. Life pod 4 crew log. Okay. Okay. Here we go. To any Altera crew. Landed in area of significant alien activity. Encountered predators in the Leviathan class, highly aggressive. Spectroscope scanner assigned species designator, Reaper. One specimen attempted to swallow the life pod, doing extensive damage in the process. Jeez, Only by swallow it? is to make for the safety of the Aurora crash site. I have retrieved a data box with the creature decoy and enough resources to fabricate a couple of them. The swim's longer than the decoy lifetime, but it should just be enough to keep them busy. Oh! If you don't find me on board the ship, presume I miscalculated. Okay, so we need to make a couple of those decoys, and then we can... When we approached the Aurora last time, we had that big, like... <laughs> I don't know. It, like, came at us out of the darkness of the depths of the ocean. That was... That was pretty... That was pretty terrifying. Uh, but, if we make a few of these bad boys, then we're... We're laughing. Okay, so we need titanium, fine. And wiring kits, uh, also pretty basic. So we need a bunch of silver ore, and we need a bunch of uh, titanium. Now, since we're out here already, and we have the exact location of pod number four, we could also look for uh, life pod number six, which is 400 meters northwest of life pod four's last known location. So... Let's check that out. And then it seems like we can we can probably we can probably get to the Aurora. We can probably get to the Aurora. Okay, now this one's like 100 meters down, right? 100 meters down in the red patches. And it's north northwest, so technically we want to be like right about there. If I'm not mistaken. Nor yeah, west northwest. Oh, west-northwest. So, actually here. Ooh. Alright. Yeah, okay, west-northwest. We got it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, thank you to Solomonk20 for the two months and the amazing robot. Thank you, guys. That's really nice. I appreciate that. Hope you guys enjoy spending your time here. We'll go down to approximately a hundred meters depth. 
Oh, there it is. <laughs> Found it. The directions were very clear. Passing 100 meters. Oxygen efficiency decreased. Let's, uh... Let's put this thing on. Integrating new PDA data. Integrating new PDA data. Get me in. All right. Oh, this is so sick. This is like the cool, this is the coolest thing ever. I love this. Okay. Let's get out of the, why is there? Uh, here, let's swap this. There we go. Okay. Life pod six, crew log number one. Ma'am, I need you to stay calm. We're not in immediate danger. Where are the rescue teams? The Aurora didn't make it. So where are the rescue teams? They're dead, ma'am. We have rendezvous coordinates, but the routes are radiated. So what are you going to do? I'm head of human resources, ma'am. This is not my expertise. But the PDA says if we can find some lead, we can make radiation suits. Oh, there! I am not setting foot outside this life pod without the proper protection. Don't worry. I'll go. Okay, interesting. So we're like one step ahead of where these guys were at, because we already have the radiation suits. What are you doing? You were gone so long. I thought you drowned. Put the flare down. I was going to try and attract someone's attention. That's not a distress flare. Stop waving it around like that. You'll catch the fuel line. Uh-oh. Calorie intake recommended. Uh-oh. Okay. Let's head back. We got another message. Um, and then there's a couple of things we're going to go and check out. I'm also going to try and get some food going. We have plenty of time to eat, I think. Right? <laughs> hey, Sir Bounce a lot. What's up, man? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Oh, welcome aboard. Susie Midic. Meat? Susie Meat? Welcome aboard. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's very kind. Might as well. We'll just scan this area. Hello. Not that we need it, but we'll get the materials. <laughs> hey, White Wing. Peeper! Thank you, White Wing. We're just collecting some dinner. I wonder if you leave this thing, if the, uh, if any of these guys would ruin it while it's just sitting here. Come here. All right, let's go home. Fast, fast. Jesus. Welcome aboard, Captain. Whew. <laughs> Plot twist, everyone's a mod. <laughs> Not quite. Uh, thank you for all the hard work you mods are doing. I know this is a game where a lot of people have played it, and it's very tempting to just, like, to really want to give me the advice of, like, you should be doing this and doing this. But truthfully, I believe it's a better experience if I just learn it as we go. That's what I believe. So I, I appreciate those that are, that totally are behind that. Okay, let's cook up some peepers here.
We are gonna, eventually, we're gonna have to just do some runs where we just focus on, like, getting minerals and stuff. Or, uh, like, resources, I should say. Let's break down the salvage. And then, that wiring kit. Ooh, what's this? Oh, the aerogel, right. Silver ore. Alright. So let's, uh, let's eat some food here. Vital signs stabilizing. Drink some water. Everybody's happy. Everybody's hydrated. This is Altera HQ. This may be your only communications window. We can't send a rescue ship all the way out there, so Aurora, you're just gonna have to meet us halfway. We've uploaded blueprints to the ship's We're computer. A sandwich run, you in? <laughs> Uh, yeah, give me a second. Black box data shows the high security terminal in the captain's quarters is still functional. Becky's leaving like in five minutes. All right, well, tell Becky I'll just take the the regular. <laughs> regular. Yeah, she'll know what I mean. The code should and be. If she doesn't. Just tell her the regular, dude. Okay. The if code. I say regular, and she's like, "What's the regular?" I can come all the way back up here. The code should be two six seven nine. The regular is just a ham and cheese. Okay, would you just say ham and cheese? Ham and cheese. Okay. <laughs> it's so weird to see like these like. uh like, regular world conversations in here now? It's very bizarre. High security terminal captain's quarters. So before they lost communications, Altera HQ uploaded a set of blueprints to the Aurora's main computer. There's a high security terminal inside the captain's quarters, located behind the prawn bay, from which the blueprints should be accessible. The code is 2679. So if we can get to the Aurora... Then we can get into here and get this code. Okay. So there's a couple of these uh, extra things I just want to clear out. So modification station, we've kind of learned that it can build things. The moon pool, we figured out what that is because we found one at the alien base. Planters and pots, grow plants. Scanner room, this is interesting. A 3D display in the center of the room stores local topographical data. Uh, system can scan for and pinpoint particular materials. See, I think this would be really good for us. Is to go out somewhere, build a scanner room, scan for stuff, and find- If we can actually say, I want to find silver, or I want to find copper, or whatever, that would be really cool. Water filtration. That makes a lot of sense. Thermal plant. Heat to electricity. Okay. I just want to clear out all of our, our entries so that we know what's new and what's not. Um, anchor pods. They consist of large spherical gas-filled membrane. At these depths, it's unlikely this structure is designed to enhance access to sunlight, but rather the pod's ability to propagate. Once the pods attain sufficient height, they burst, releasing spores, which catch the currents and disperse around the local area. Wow. Cave bush. Got to be growing some of that one day. Eye stock. This was, we found this uh, by. Was that near the? Was that near the um, the De, what, the first Degazi habitat? Or it might have been near one of these other beacons actually. We can keep this on. Uh, furled papyrus is another plant. Jelly shroom. Defensive mechanisms. Membrane tree. That's so cool. Redwort we've seen. The tiger plants. These are the ones that shoot us on the back of the reef backs. Fine nettle. Violet bow. Okay. Fauna. Scavengers and parasites. We've seen all of these. <laughs> we know these little head crabs. Necessary waste recycler. Avoid or incapacitate. The bleeders. Avoid or incapacitate. Gary fish, whole fish, hoverfish, Reginald spade fish. Once we get into like, if we can actually build like a creature habitat or whatever, then it will be good to actually research these more and figure out what we need to do. Equip stasis rifle. Repulse and Kazan are similar before approaching shallow caves. Oh, look at that. So we're going to actually get, like, a like weapons. Because these are the ones that uh, you hear that sound, and then they chase out at you, right? It's pretty cool. These biters. 
Avoid packs. Try not to bleed. Brain coral we've read. Air tanks are equipped with, to siphon oxygen. I wonder how this... If this is something we can use, though. Coral shell plate. Table coral. We've gotten that for various things. Alright. So that's all... Now our log is totally clear. Which is beautiful. I'm going to keep our data downloads open. And our clues open. And I think that's good. Whoops. Alright. So. What do we want to... What do we want to focus on here? This... Everything kind of is leading us to the... To the Aurora. Um... What do you guys think we should do? Do you think we should focus on going out and, like, gathering uh, some materials and maybe building a base between, like, where we are and the alien uh, facility area? I'm thinking if we build a base, like, in the middle of that, that would facilitate good trips, like, to and from that area, and we could explore the rest of that island. Uh, or should I try and make some of these, these uh, beacons and go towards the Aurora. What do you guys think about that? Base building would be awesome. Try to get to the... Some people are saying Aurora. Island. It's interesting. Okay. Okay. I think what we'll do... I think what we'll do then, considering all of the uh, advice here, is... We'll, we'll, we'll do, like, a, a bit of a, a materials run, if we can. And we'll go, we'll go in the direction of the island. Uh, and we'll see how far we get. And we'll know, like, where our halfway point is, because we're tracking it. And then we could start a basic base out there. Now, I don't know if I ever need to go back to where... Um, this other beacon is at. So I might actually just go and snag it so that we have multiple beacons to work with. And this is a relatively quick trip. I think it's down here, no? Yeah. So we'll go pick up our other beacon. Passing 100 meters. Oxygen efficiency decreased. I know that we've got the, uh, the helmet off here, but we can suffer through it. All right. Hey, what's up, Whiting? How are you, man? Nice to see you. Uh, colorful Jargon, just finished the first YouTube episode. How much progress has been made? Well, this is the, uh, the third day that I've streamed it. So, and they've been about three hours each. You've seen the first hour, so quite a bit since then. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to store some of these flares and stuff. Got, let's just put the flares in our miscellaneous uh, locker here. We've got a fire extinguisher here. We can store some titanium, the lead. I think everything else we're like good to go. Maybe I'll just break down the salvage before we head out. <coughs> And I'll turn it into yet another locker. Just to basically clear up space. Alright. So should we take the Seamoth? The only problem with the Seamoth... <clears throat> excuse me. Is that, um... I can't- I can't gather, like, materials and stuff in it. So... I think it's probably better for us to just take this bad boy.
And at around the 500 meter mark, I might put down a beacon and say like, hey, this could be a potential uh, base building section. But let's keep an eye out for places with materials. Like this. Nice. Now let's just listen to this music. Oh my god! I'm turning it up. More vibe. Yes, it is. And then when we head back to the island, we can obviously spend some time exploring it a little bit more. We went under, uh, in like the water cave that they had there. And once we get to the island too, we can also eat and, uh, and drink from those trees. Now, here's a question, guys. So, this is about the halfway point. If I... If I wanted to, say, build my base here... Let's call this, uh... Possible base location. Uh, would I need to build it on the rocks, or is it like a floating system? Well, there's two islands we need to explore, uh, Blood Reaper. There's the, uh, Aurora Rendezvous that I want to check out, because there's areas of that that I didn't finish. But then there's that second, uh, island location as well that I want to check out, where we found, like, that fresh water entry at the bottom. You gotta put it on a thing. Okay. I gotcha. Thanks. That's good advice. Uh, Rosen Krikeris, thank you so much. Nashable, thank you for the subs, you guys. And Blood Reaper, thanks for the five bucks. He says, your plan of making your first base a storage house is sound. I support the plan of finding the beacons because, honestly, you can kill two birds with one stone. As you explore beacons, you could find good spots for a base. Sorry if it sounds back sea. No, that's, that's okay. That's not too bad. Oh no, this is the second island. Okay, fine. We're going to the second island first. My bad. My bad. I got confused on which island we were actually heading to. This is that, that clear water that I was talking about. So let's, uh, let's explore. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, I actually we were back there. But we were we were at the top of this island at one point and then we quickly made our way down here because the rendezvous was actually at the back of this little cavern. Hey Marcin, what's up, dude? Hello is check. Am I saying that right? Check. <laughs> Uh, Neo Terio, thank you so much for, uh, joining the team. Mademoiselle Danielle just gifted you a, a little sub there. That's very nice. 
And, uh, Scrolls or Hole Fighter, thanks for the 420 and endorsing this world's plants. Indigenous life forms, the pink caps. Harvestable spores, inedible. Okay. Let's go up and find some of those trees that we can just eat. <laughs> Is that right? Uh oh. Bad joke time. Uh, Scrolger said, glad you're enjoying the game. You're starting to scratch the surface. Jesus. Just the surface, man? I'm, I love that. Like, I am in no rush to get through here. I'm having a super time. Where are... Oh, no. Oh, God. Where are the trees... ...that we can eat? Oh, I see. Okay, this is where we first entered last time. Uh, Wild Chicken, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for the donation. He says, uh, bad... Bad joke time. <laughs> bad joke time. I used to operate an origami store, but it folded. Here's five bucks for finally having Mick Cafe. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And Ninja Nurse and Timuk, thank you so much for the subs, you guys. I appreciate that. We- oh! Guess what? Tim Nuke! Timuk! You are the 900th subscriber. Thank you so much, buddy. I mean, we do- we fluctuate up and down, but we just hit 900. Thank you, guys. That's amazing. Okay, where's my... Where are the trees? Ah, here we go, here we go, here we go. How much space do we have? Quite a bit. Can we crouch? I just realized that we... I don't think we can crouch. Vital signs stabilizing. <laughs> yeah, blog is exact. Only 900? <laughs> Thank you guys. That's all. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Thank you guys. Uh a bone a mirror, a wild wet sock. <laughs> wild chicken and wild wet sock. You guys should get together. And Kademic. Thank you guys all for the subs. It's really nice. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, now how the frick are we going to map this place? Speckled Rattler. The interesting thing about this island, we've found so many different types of plants. They generate characteristic rattle when the plant is shaken. This may act to ward off predators or even encourage predation. It's interesting because... Outside of like... Like typically, at least so far, we've been finding things that we can either... Uh, eat or take samples of or use in materials or or um, like it has some use but a lot of the stuff on this island seem to be just like oh these are plants and you're like okay so I think you can take samples from them and eventually you could plant them I don't know if it's just for aesthetics or what oh here we go baby Let's bring out the Dyson hair dryer here and Oh. Oh. We have another one of those uh warp gates or whatever. At least that's what we think they are. All right. All right. So, I wonder if all of the islands are alien uh like ha alien I don't know what you call them, like, stations. Okay, I wonder if... <laughs> I hate saying these things out loud because I don't want to, uh, I don't want people to answer me. <laughs> I don't want people to answer me. It sounds crazy. It sounds bad, but I'm like, I want to ask questions, but I don't want the answers, you know? But what I'm thinking inside my head that you guys can't hear is... There must be a way that eventually we can, like, reactivate this stuff. And if we can reactivate this, then we can travel between the islands. 
if that if this is in fact like a warp gate type thing the problem is with these warp gates if that's what these are is it we've never seen like there's no console there's no nothing and so how to activate them don't know but there's probably a lot that we need to uh, find out still cool very cool okay so that's like that's underground just say that everything you ask is rhetorical unless you ask me. I've spent 80 hours chasing lore. Oh, damn, Neil. That's... That's cool. In your opinion, uh... In your opinion, how... How is the lore in this game? Like, does everything line up? You know, sometimes games go too deep, and then things start to get, like, confusing or whatever. Uh... In your opinion, does this game, like... Does it do lore right? Because one of the things that I've loved about Subnautica so far. I love the little, like, the hints and stuff in here. It's like, oh, like, even just this last one that we found. Um, this crew log here. Where was it? It was one of these things where... It was one of these things that was, like, uh, telling us about the beacons or whatever, and then if you plant the beacon for long enough, then you can just m barely make it kind of thing. Uh, Don Wado... How do you say that? Don Hugh God Uku. <laughs> the lore, in my opinion, is very good. I haven't finished it yet, but the story's really starting to get interesting. The game is very Dark Souls-esque. If you want the lore, you have to dig for it. I found nothing contradicting, but most of it hints and breadcrumbs besides the huge main driving force that keeps you moving. Yeah, that's fair. I find that, um... Me, personally, the, the Dark Souls lore is something that always confuses me. No matter how much I try, it's hard to put that together. There's so much interpretation. Okay, so this is... Okay, I see. We're gonna try and get higher up onto this mountain here and see if there's anything else we can find. But this is pretty uh, revelatory because now we found two islands out in this planet. There's probably more. But we found two, and both of them have these alien, like, artifacts or bases within them. So that's pretty, uh, that's pretty interesting. Oh, what? Oh. I thought I saw something. Oh no, there's definitely something up there. Oh yeah, there's okay, we're we're climbing this. This is um Yes, but it's easier in Subnautica since you get a PDA to track all of it in writing one look. Yeah, totally. Totally. I I I am blown away at the detail that they've put into this. To be completely honest, like it is beyond my wildest. Oh, look at that. There's an observatory thing up there. What? Okay. That looks like one of the things that we can actually build. Oh, now hold on a second. One thing I'm curious about is... Oh, that is not at all what I wanted. Can I build stuff like... Oh, yeah, okay. We can build stuff on the islands. I wasn't sure if this needed to be, um, rooted in water, if that makes sense. And this seems to suggest that, yeah, we can, so... <laughs> oh, there's more down there! Oh, you guys, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But this is, like, the coolest frickin' thing I've ever done. This is... I don't know what it is. You know what? There could be a, a, hundreds of other, like, survival games that do a similar things. But the way that this has been done is just, it's, it's so, it's gripped me so hard that this is like all I can think about. I think I could sit in here for literally, I could sit here for 10, 12 hours and it wouldn't even feel like I'm doing anything. 
Okay, I gotta catch up on a few people here. Sorry, guys. Uh, tenfold, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Stoner PD. <laughs> thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh, you're gonna like the 420 donation sounds, I think. Uh, the Tresh, thanks for the four months. Keep the amazing videos and the steams. <laughs> and the steams, he says. Thanks, man. Uh, I think he means streams, but that's fine. Uh, Reality O, thanks for the four months. Rooted in water. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. Oh, bulkhead. That's new. Is it? Yeah, that's new. Where's Dexter? He's under my feet. He's keeping my feet super warm. Okay. So, a bulkhead door. Designed to separate compartments while reinforcing structural integrity with its solid titanium frame. The door can be opened and closed to seal off compartments in the event of fire or flooding or simply for privacy. How does that differ from just like our regular, uh... Like our regular door? Um, let's see. Like our regular hatch. Access point to the habitat. Hey, JHZ, what's up, man? Thank you so much. Near blueprint acquired. I wonder if it makes sense at some point to just do like a full. Would it make sense to do just a full stream that is 100% dedicated to like building a base? I would. I wouldn't want to like stumble on stuff accidentally. Oh, nice. I wouldn't want to stumble on stuff accidentally, though, while doing that. But maybe that's unavoidable. It increases stability. Integrating new PDA data. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. I don't really know what stability is, but I imagine that, like, you maybe we, there's a certain limit to how big you can build or something. But don't tell me. We'll figure that out, okay? Uh, Falstro, dude, what? That's really amazing. Thanks for the $104.20, dude. He says, here's to getting off to a good start. Two more weeks. Thanks, man. That's all. That's amazing. Uh, for those that don't know, I'm quitting my full-time job that I've been at for... <laughs> 12 years. To, uh, to do content creation full-time. February 16th is my last day. And I am... Trying to stay checked in at my job so hard, but it is very tough to do. Uh, Falstro, thank you so much, man. That's really nice. That's really nice. Blood Reaper says, bulkheads compared to hatches are the same thought process of metal doors compared to wooden doors. Okay, so they're just stronger. Okay. Falstro, that's really nice, man. Thank you so much. That's really nice. Um, the spotlight... Automatically rotates on a 180 degree arch. Motion sensitive, will track nearby moving objects, and draws electricity from main power. Dudes, I am so pumped to build a base. Oh, this is, uh, oh! So we found his, uh, we found this Bart, we found two, three, five, and six. So there's at least one in four that we're missing. Let's check this out. Edmund! Thank you so much for the three months, buddy, okay? That's amazing. Thank you. Doomcoy, you're gonna be a dad on the 12th? Oh, bro, congratulations. Congratulations, man. Can we give a congratulations to, uh, to Doomcoy, please? He's gonna be, uh, he's gonna be a dad. That's amazing, dude. This is the first time I've seen sunlight in months. Jeez Louise, you guys. This is incredible. Thank you so much. Bro code, as always, man, thanks for the bits. He said, we've been doing some heavy mining of a, of a bit mountain, and we've discovered a new rich vein. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Remember, overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Thanks, buddy. That's amazing. Uh, Doomcoy, do you know if it's a boy or, or, or a girl? I don't think you said there, but... Uh, do you know the, do you know the gender? This is the first time I've seen sunlight in months. After all that time in the deep, I'd been dreaming of it. Now that I'm back here, I'm finding it hard to enjoy alone. Mm. 
Father was right. We should never have left this place. We shouldn't have gone so deep. They do not <laughs> want us down there. Oh, what? Despite my best efforts, ill health is taking hold of me. The visions are getting worse. Marguerite and Father are now part of the ecosystem of this incredible planet. It's reassuring to know that when I go, I'll join them. Until then, well, there's always the view. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second here. Okay, hold on a second. First of all, these logs are different, I noticed. So two, three, five, six. These are Degazi logs. These are his logs. These are totally different. However, this, uh, this, uh, uh, log here, this is exactly the log from the trailer. And I kind of thought that in that trailer that was us, but in the trailer that's Bart, who is not us, so... That's weird. That's weird. Interesting. So, because I always kind of thought Marguerite and Father, maybe we'd have some references to, like, family out here. But I guess not. Interesting. Now, this ill health, I imagine that's the same kind of infection thing that we have going on. Uh, and he's saying, Father is right, we never should have left this place. I'm assuming he means this island, because he's returning from the deep, right? We shouldn't have gone so deep, they don't want us down there. And I think they, he could be talking about the, like, the, the, um, creatures of the deep or whatever. Or he could be talking about these alien things that seem to be here. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Oh, uh, I don't know what's going on. This is awesome. Okay. Okay. Uh, Photo Heathen and Wandering Dragon, thank you guys both for the bits. Uh, Photo Heathen... Heathen has been around for a super long time, bro. I hope you're doing good, man. It says, congrats on going full-time. Best of luck. Thanks, man. That's really kind. Let's, let's save the game, because I don't know what happens if we don't. Let's, uh, not drink our water, I think. Indoor... Okay, so, yeah. So, these things we can probably build to make, like... New blueprint acquired. Interior grow bed is more compact than the outdoor version and features a hydroponic nutrient delivery system. So then we could like farm whatever we want inside of our own base. It's unclear whether or not it is native to this planet. Genetic code shares some features with other local plant life, but this may be the result of a DNA transfusion rather than natural evolution. Lantern fruit. Edible in an emergency. A conglomeration of individual vines which rely on one another for structural support grows exclusively on fertile land. Each vine produces orange lantern-shaped fruits with minimal nutrition and hydration value. Okay. So it's just... Okay. If you have to eat it, it's, like, not perfect, but... It's better than nothing, is basically what they're getting at. Orange-colored land plant, which usually suggests... Or usually contains a thick, protein-rich sludge at its base. This may suggest a carnivorous life cycle, wherein grubs and insects are attracted to the bright petals, making their way to the center of the plant, but are unable to scale back up the slick inner leaves and are ultimately digested. Okay. In Jaffa Cups, we've seen... Look at this. I wonder if... Uh, I'm thinking back to the trailer, and we saw the guy... He had, like, his hand on the window when he was telling... He was saying that thing that we just heard. I wonder if this is the specific location. I wonder if this is the specific location. That he said that in. Alright. So now that we're up here, look, there's another one. So he's built these, like, observatory things on the highest points. Huh? Huh? <laughs> oh, 
This is so cool, man. Is it? That's what I've heard that before. Thanks. <laughs> uh, photo. Oh, reality. Oh, gifted a sub over to Photo Heathen. That's really nice, man. Oh, yeah, it was underwater, though. That's right. Well, okay. Okay. So, hear me out. This might be crazy. But perhaps, at one point, this was underwater. Because it is rusted up. It is super rusted up. So... Maybe the water... Look. I don't know. Maybe the water levels used to be way up here, okay? It could be a thing. It could be. Uh, Lurpuka, thank you so much for the donation. Says, I started watching your content a few years ago when you played Soma. Good luck going full-time. Oh, Soma! <laughs> this lubricant is essential. Soma is so freaking good. I wish I could play Soma for the first time again and not know anything about it. That was incredible. Kitty Longshanks, thanks for the donation as well, says, You should have a notification sound of Bob Dabalina for when someone donates a lot of money. Also, love the stream. My boyfriend and I have made it a thing to watch your stream when we're together. Relationship goals. Uh, hello, Kitty Longshanks and boyfriend. Thank you. That's a great idea as well. Um, on the Billion streams, I think it was, we had uh, Bob Dabalina play for the 420 donation, mostly for Falstro. Every, every, uh... Every game now, because Falstro always donates 420. It's like a thing. <laughs> I feel like it's super nice, but it's all it's also like funny now. And every single like uh, stream, we have a different sound for 420 uh, for Falstro. It's really I like it. Okay, so I think we came in from there. We're up here. I definitely want to check down there, and I want to check up there. I don't see any other like significant landmarks. So let's go. What if all of this is a simulation you're stuck in the Matrix? I mean, that's the cool thing about games, right? It's like, you could do anything. It totally could be, man. It totally could be. I could be in somebody's snow globe on their desk right now. But I think about that in real life, too. You ever think about, like, because we're all, we're all, like, so insignificant in, like, the big scope of things that, uh... Okay, there's actually a path over there, it looks like. In the grand scheme of things, we're all so insignificant that it's like... We could just be in this tiny little microcosm on somebody's desk. I think about that stuff sometimes. Then I get depressed and then I stop thinking about it. Okay, so... This is like their main thing, I think. Here's the exterior grow bed. New blueprint acquired. Can be installed anywhere on land or underwater where there is space. The cool thing about a lot of these um, installations, like the grow beds, the... Uh, where is it? The, uh, the breeding, like, the aquarium where we could probably put the eggs and, like, hatch stuff. Because it's all automated environment regulation. That's, that's what I was looking for. Automated environment regulation. They all, all of these things seem to have that, which is really cool. A marble melon? High water content. Man, this is like... I'm gonna go out on a limb here and, and guess something. Chinese potato plant edible. The Chinese potato is common throughout the China territories where synthetic foods are still stigmatized. And there remains large tracts of arable land on which to grow fresh produce. Genetically designed prior to the expansion, this plant is highly adaptable to different environments and a staple of new colonies. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, for all of the stuff that we could do, you can probably, like, you can probably, like, all the base building and planting all this stuff, I don't know if that's even essential to the main thing. Like, do you ever have to do that? Probably not. But it sure as hell is cool. 
Chinese potato. Decent. Marble melon. Ooh, okay, there's not a lot of them, so let's maybe let them continue to grow. Yeah, lots of water and food. Cool. Small marble melon, probably less. Oh, I see, yeah. That's so cool. Have I mentioned to you guys that I think this is cool yet? You don't, but you'll make your life easier. Yeah, for sure. I'm not saying that to suggest that I don't want to, because I, I do. I love it. Alright. Oh, look at that. There's a crab in there. Is he alive? I think he's alive! We're going hunting. Okay. Uh, fine. Fine. I didn't want to get in that way anyway. Oh, okay, that's how ladders work. Cool. Full-on battery. Oh, this is another Degazi log. Well, hello there. Son, I said wait for the storm to pass. Your life's more valuable to me than a plant patch. You stop being in charge when the ship you were captaining sunk. I'll stop being in charge when you take charge of yourself. Say, Chief. Chief. What? Do you know how to drain those grow beds of 40 tons of storm water? Or how to conjure food from the air? I know how to prioritize. I'm just saying, if that's so, What's your boy's life worth to you today? If tomorrow you're gonna be so hungry you start wondering what he tastes like. What? So, go deal with the plants. Bart, Torgo, has disembarked the habitat. That's cool. Interfere with my family again. And when rescue arrives, I will leave you here. Do you understand me? No rescue coming, Chief. Not in time. No staying here neither. This rain keeps falling. Sooner or later, this place will be buried. Okay. The only choice we got is whether to get buried with it. Okay, so it seems like... Okay, this place was probably not underwater, ever. Uh, this is all caused by, like, this non-stop rain that they seem to be experiencing. Oh. Ah! Torgo's log number one. Here we go. Chief's log, five weeks since the crash. The only other survivors are my son, Bart, and Maida, the cut-price mercenary I commissioned for the journey. After days drifting in the life pod, rain hammering on the roof, the weather cleared and we washed up here. I had oh. Maida salvage the Degazi wreck, set Bart to finding us a stable source of food. His education is paying off sooner than I'd anticipated. Our only problem is Maida. She says the weather's going to turn. I say she's finding excuses to risk our lives. I imagine she's not gonna weaken her life without a physical altercation, and she's itching for a fight. In every judgment she makes, things go from bad to worse. If she had my experience, she'd have more faith. Humans have spent millennia specializing in how to shackle nature to our will. <laughs> this planet won't cause us any new problems. My one task now is to keep us alive as comfortably as possible until the insurance company arranges rescue. Uh huh. In this part of space, that could be months or even years. So, this is how he started, and then he went into the dilemma. And this is where these were the possible uh, Degazi habitat locations started to, to come in. Hmm. Okay. This is so cool, by the way. Relevance! What's up, man? Welcome. How you doing? 
Pay bro, thanks for the four months too, by the way. I missed you a few minutes ago. Four months, baby. Give me Malbablima <laughs> or something. <laughs> thanks, man. I appreciate it.